Oh, Sheol, I wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you. I'm not going, going to go into a, a real long, drawn out thing. These are things that you can look up for yourself in the Bible. And uh, anyway, these thoughts is important, but it's centralized on one thought. All right. A long time ago, all right, just think of like John Wesley and uh, other preachers like him. Uh, right there's a whole list of them. Some, I'm not good on names anymore. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Preachers of long ago, they used to preach the truth. They used to preach the gospel. And they, they preached it the way it should have been preached. And nowadays you don't hear enough of it, right? Uh, because the churches today, it's about a feel good. Now everyone likes to feel good, but that's the problem. It has to do with, excuse me. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the flesh, we, in our flesh, we like feeling good. I mean, there's not anybody that doesn't like to feel good. I mean, everyone does. But there's some things that's just a temporary. And then there's that which will last forever. And, and the, the truth is, in this life that we live today, is we, we, we tend to live for pleasure. Okay, we live for pleasure, and and the things that we have today is just temporary on our feel good. And we're always trying to when that wears out, whatever it may be, then we go to something else, uh, trying to upgrade it, so to speak. So we, you know, to get that natural high or whatever you want to call it, and keep on and on and on. Well, some of this stuff comes from the church, and no one likes the preachers who get up and preach about hell. Uh, preach against sin the way the Bible speaks against it. They call it fear mongering and all this, you know, and uh, they don't like no one's going to bring things down, you know, we don't want all this and what have you. And they bring in things, uh, you know, things about money because everybody seems like more into pleasure, more into feeling good. And that money makes them feel good, but it only lasts a little bit, so they have to upgrade. You got to get upgrade it, shall I say, and have more money, more of this, more things, more what have you, and on and on and on. All right. Now, what I want to do is share some uh, passages with you and uh, get you to thinking. Now, you look it up for yourself. If it's not in the Bible, then we, no one has uh, any business preaching it. Now, if I come or you come on our own initiative and our own name or our own whatever and start preaching and, uh, or teaching or talking about different things that's not even in here, well, when we start putting it in and trying to uh, come along with a tag, trying to say that we come in the name of the Lord, well, actually what we're doing is really messing up big time because we're just coming in our own self, in our own names, our own authority and all this. Uh, we need to step out and take a, uh, you know, uh, or should I say, uh, take a time out from all this indoctrinational stuff uh, that, the, when I say indoctrinational stuff, is the stuff that feel good stuff. Uh, don't bring the doom and gloom in church. Let's just have good, happy music all the time. Let's, you know, because you don't even hear the rebukes anymore. You know, and that, this is the problem that you have in the churches today. You got so much sin and stuff going on in the church is because no one rebukes, no one, uh, no, no one admonishes people. They don't do it biblically, and they they go off on different contingents 
you know, and, and everything is not according to Scripture. But these are things, what I'm, but these two thoughts, I mean, we could go into many thoughts into this one about, you know, the old time preaching, the, you know, the, you know, the gospel, the way it should be preached, the apostolic doctrine, the teaching. When I say apostolic, I'm not talking about, oh, the first apostolic church or the apostolic uh, reformation type thing or whatever. I'm talking about what the apostles taught, that apostolic teaching. There's very few. There are some, but there are very few in this country teaches it. It's about feel good and everything else. A bunch of fat cats and everything else is lazy and stuff and gotten laxed off of this and we need to stay to this. But all right, let's talk about two things and I don't want to keep this long. All right, and it's that's why I'm not going into a lot of uh, other scripture. These are things you can look up for yourself because it's here. I'm not telling you that just because, oh, well, you know, he don't have anything to, you know, back it up, blah, blah, blah. Why? you blind, literally? Can't see? What, you have no brain? You can't think for yourself? It's in here. But, like I said, for the sake of time, all right, this is what my uh, two thoughts. All right, now let's go to Exodus ch uh, chapter 20. Now, the well, this is where, uh, like in chapter 19 and 20 of Exodus, uh, we we sit there and find where God is has told the people, you know, that they needed to consecrate themselves and get themselves prepared for He was coming. And he was going to give them some commandments, right? What we know as the Ten Commandments. Okay, now, understand this, that there was a loud shofar and fire and smoke and everything coming down upon the mountain, Mount Sinai. And you got to think, I mean, I'm sure some of you have seen those videos about uh, the strange sounds and stuff. You know, when you listen to them, it just makes you think, at least makes me think, about what it must have been like um, for the people on the mountain. Or, or, no, they weren't on the mountain, but around by the mountain when they saw the, the fire smoke and heard the, the shofar. And it was loud. These people were petrified and you know God spoke to them and gave them the commandments and after he gave them the commandments now here in chapter 20 verse 18 we'll start there you know uh, and we'll work our way down it says now all the people witnessed the thundering the lightning flashes the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. All right, now on this side, I want to talk about fear, all right? Fear. Now, there, there's a fear, a, a reverence in it, and all, you know, a, a respect of God. And then there's a fear that terrifies you. Uh, you know, we, we got all kinds of fears out, you know, the kind of fear like a person goes and sits and watches uh, horror films and... And, and and all that and uh, Christians have no business watching that uh, but anyway my point is on that fear there's you know especially in the English language in modern days we have our own definitions and, and we define it in different ways but but the point is 
the the fear of God. All right, now the old time preacher used to preach on this, right? On the fear of God. You know, and they believed in the respect and reverence of God, but also to fear Him. Because Jesus, you know, mentioned about a fear. To fear who? Who should we fear? Him, him, he, who is able to, you know, destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay? But it, it, this is something here, all right, it says, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, so that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. All right, and the apostolic teaching, the apostles, uh, they taught about judgment. And they believed in a, a you know, fear. And they, they also dealt with sin. Sin has to be dealt with. God is not one who winks at it and says, I'm just a modern God. <laughs> I go with the times. I'm all for all this stuff. Yeah, anything for me, right? No. No, he's not like that. God is not a man, like a, a man that he should.